This is PodKit, episode 41, Decidedly Less Premium, on Saturday, September 1st, 2018. And now, life is better when your computers don't work. This episode of PodKit is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk41. So, a few Apple things have happened in the most recent few weeks here. This is true. Quite a lot of Apple things, even. No events, but but tons of leaks and rumors and good old-fashioned news. It reminds me of last August and... or July, August, September, but not quite as extreme. We didn't have a HomePod firmware leaking that Mm. leaks lots of new things, but um, we have a couple images and then a bunch of uh, spelunking that that at underscore inside has been doing and finding some cool new things truly truly so uh without further ado let's dive in uh first and foremost there's a lot of information about the new iphones that came out just in the past couple of days yeah so these these new iphones i mean they're you know we've been hearing about these for you know quite some time now new new 10 models but what were they going to call them well Mm. apparently we have a name Brian, what's the name? The iPhone extra small. <laughs> no, the 10, 10 S or XS. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm curious if this is, I feel like the name XS is just, well, it sounds like X, XS. So on one hand, I don't know what image they got um, the XS from or from what, I don't know what leak mm-hmm. they have to verify that it was XS. I almost hope that was just a placeholder because it's such I, an awful yeah. name. Right. It hurts. I agree with you. It it's not only extra small, it's it's tens, it's <laughs> excess. It it means very little, yeah. I don't for sure. I don't know what it could be. I mean it either means a lot or it means extra small or it means tens. I mean it's right. nothing's good about that name. <laughs> oh, when I said it means very little, I guess that's kind of that has multiple meanings, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um but it comes in gold. Well, that's nice. shiny gold at that, yes. Yeah. Um, so so we've been verified that there will be two models of the new 10 model. Um, the screen sizes will be 5.8, which is what they have now, and then also mm-hmm. a 6.5, which is um, quite a bit bigger. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm considering getting that larger one. We'll see, You though. should do it. Once, once you go to a bigger phone screen size, you never need to go back. I'm considering it as well. Um, I have a 7. I think, Brian, you do too. Yep. Um, so I, th- I think we're kind of on the same phone-wise schedule nowadays. But um, I've, I've been kind of rocking the 7 with a battery pack for, for um, basically the entirety of the past year, um, which maybe is a little unnecessary, but I've, I've found it to be um, all still pretty helpful uh, with this thing getting a little long in the tooth, so it might be just about time. And the spec bumps for the for the tens, extra small XS, um, it, it it seems pretty compelling. So uh, let's play a game of pricing. So last year the iPhone 10 cost one thousand dollars, and I think there was another model with more storage above that, but I don't know what that price was. Right. What do you think the pricing tiers will be for these new models? I'm sure there'll still be one at the grand mark. I bet that the 10 will be less than that. I don't know. I feel like jumping to a thousand was quite a bit of an increase and that the 10 or whatever the 10 S will be, I don't know, maybe 900, Mm -hmm. 800. It depends how much storage they put in it. Yep. And then of course you can get the upgrade to from 128 to 256 or to 512 or something for an extra. Right. 150 or 300 or something like that but i think the plus model will be at least 150 more than the base as well yeah i right. I, I pretty much agree I th- i'm thinking um like 900 and 1100 yeah that sounds right to me yeah so so the um the note line just came out and the the phone starts at a thousand and then mm-hmm. the um internals spec upgrade so more memory and more storage um that's $250 more. So right. with an actual screen size difference, you know, something around there seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. And maybe they'll give us some more storage with it too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. What's next? 
lots more stuff about iOS 12. Um, Hooray. Yeah, so uh, using iOS 12, people have found some kind of interesting stuff, like by, by, by taking a look at what comes along with the SDKs and the, and the build versions that are issued to developers. Um, so the first among that list is uh, the potential for Face ID on iPad, um, which is, you know, like I, I still am rocking an iPad Air 2, um, and, um, you know, that clearly wouldn't be part of this. Uh, it barely, like it has like the first generation secure enclave if you can even call it that if that's even the right term um the insecure enclave <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh that's that's a good one um but um bringing that to a new platform makes a lot of sense definitely seems like that's the route apple's kind of going to um supplant touch id where possible yeah so basically bringing face id to the ipad is a great idea i have no problems with that so I very rarely use my iPad, but when I do, you know, I press the little power button in the top corner, and I just stare at it, and I keep <laughs> staring at it, and then I realize, and I wonder, oh, right, this isn't one of those things that wake up when you look at it, because mm-hmm. I'm so used to even my not Apple phone actually doing that. If you tell it to wake up, and then you look at it, it authenticates you. I'm just so used to it now. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, iPad is going to desperately need it. And I feel like I'm still happy with Touch ID and the iPad because I didn't get an iPad with Touch ID until, was it a year ago in the spring? So like May 2017. Right. And so it's still kind of novel for me that like I can use one password and not have to type in my master password all the time. Totally. That's awesome. But with the Face ID, it'd be even better. Yeah, for me, I haven't even used, like I don't own a device that... um supports face id so it's not extremely um intriguing to me i'm sure as soon as i get um a phone that has face id my brain's gonna start to think in those terms and i'm gonna start to be very upset that other devices don't react in that way oh totally you will be very upset and you will just you'll just um you'll do what i do which is you you come to a device that has a camera and you know it does and you just stare at it why (laughs) oh wait oh right you're not one of them okay i get it Right. Yeah. I guess that's it's not entirely true that I don't. I have a my Linux laptop, my custom laptop has a Windows Hello camera in it, but that thing never works. Yeah, it's because um, you're running Linux. Well, <laughs> well, it, it it doesn't work when I'm running Windows either. Oh, so, uh, okay. Well, that's fair. Yeah, but that that could just be I haven't trained it in ideal in, environments. At least it has a friendly name too. Windows yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, so so in addition to getting Face ID on the iPad. There's also this um, iPad picture that somebody found deep within mm-hmm. iOS 12 that shows the iPad with very thin bezels, extraordinarily good-looking thin bezels, and right. no home button, and no notch. So And they're uniform, too. That makes us wonder, how will they accomplish Face ID with no notch? <laughs> well, this, the sensor bar has got to be hidden in that rather tiny uh bezel yeah i I think that bezel is a little larger than on the iphone and it doesn't you know the the bezel doesn't curve off the edge of the device either for sure Mm -hmm. yeah this this looks really nice i am a big fan um is Mm -hmm. the current small ipad 11 inch is that is that the number they use normally i think 11 half right yeah 10 and a half to 11 is usually the um like what i would consider the full size ipad not the mini okay but then they do have the three hundred thirty dollar nine point seven inch iPad right. as well. Yeah, right. I think I think these are still pro models, so I guess that's that makes sense. Right. Yeah, that looks really good. So so when they come out with these new models, um, what do you think about pricing for these? Uh, I'd have to imagine that those are going to be the pros. So we'd yep. be looking at roughly a grand to get into it. Uh, up to fifteen hundred, probably for the smaller model. You think so? Because the current Pro definitely does not cost that much. It doesn't. No. Oh, the twelve point well. nine inch here. I'll I'll pull it up. Um, now. The the ten um, the ten point five inch, which is the eleven inch on that little screenshot picture somebody found. That's six forty nine base model. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And the twelve point nine is seven ninety nine. So base. so these 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 prices are very competitive. Um. And, and the yeah. word pro doesn't mean what we always want it to mean, which is good. It just means the next tier up. Right. I uh, I guess, like, 
hearing that, A, shows me just how outdated my iPad pricing info is in my brain, <laughs> and uh, B, it actually kind of helps sell me on it. Um, so I guess this might be a very expensive se- September for this kid. But uh, You know, uh, that also is a good question. So do you think the screens will be LCD still, or do you think they'll go somehow to um, OLED? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I, I'd have to imagine they'd stick with LCD. I agree. Uh, o- the, OLED, the color accuracy. And... OLED on that screen size is a big deal. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a little bit more expensive. So it starts at seven ninety nine, and then the other one is eight ninety nine or something. But um, right. I think the the pricing is pretty pretty good. It's amazing to me that you can get a thirteen inch iPad for only eight hundred dollars. That is pretty surreal. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's not how i remember it at all <laughs> yeah i know it's it, it, it's kind of funny like um just 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 uh tech product pricing in general has crept up but it's no longer oh yeah that's a lot of money it's like yeah okay that's kind of reasonable right right it's not necessarily a good thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but it's i agree with you it's kind of where we're at nowadays for sure some other stuff we've seen come out of the iOS 12 uh, pre-release builds uh, include references to multiple SIM card slots, which is super intriguing, especially for folks who um, go out of the country a lot or even just have like um, a kind of a, like location or carrier-based like bifurcation about some things. Yep. So, um, so basically anywhere that's not the United States. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is quite popular in like Brazil and India mm-hmm. and maybe China. Yep. Where, you know, you have a work sim and a and a personal sim, and you sw- swap the sim card out, so you don't have to carry around multiple phones, and you can separate the two and have on and off hours. Yep. Um, I've also heard that this this iPhone would be region specific, so mm. it wouldn't necessarily be for sale in the United States. Yep. But that makes sense. We we don't know yet. Yeah. The um the note line that just came out here, they have um. So it's it's technically the same phone. It's just the SIM tray is different internally. So yeah. instead of having um, a spot for an SD card, you have a, a, a second spot for another SIM card. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know it could work on something like that. That's that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, also, in the lineup of iPhones, there's the rumor of the kind of middle in between the iPhone Ten S's or iPhone ten S plus and it'd be like an L C D only but larger phone, maybe a six point one inch display, and that might be cheaper mm-hmm. but and maybe not have face ID or maybe what I don't remember, but it'd be L C D, not OLED, a few cheaper things, and so it'd be that, you know, budget large phone versus a budget small phone like the iPhone S E was. Mm-hmm. Right. Um Yeah, this is the Ever since we've been hearing about the three model lineup for this year, this phone has stood out as being the odd one out because mm-hmm. it's in between the two other sizes, but it's supposed to be cheaper because it's not using a a premium screen. But how do you position it in the marketing lineup? Right. Yeah. Um, China only. I I would be very surprised if Apple talked about a phone here in the u.s but then didn't sell it right yeah i feel like they usually have kind of a global reach yeah uh on the other hand i mean if they actually didn't release it now and then had a separate event in china which would be unheard of for apple i don't think that's ever happened right um then if they did it there then cool i guess that's that's nice um just seems unlikely uh so yeah i don't know we're gonna have to see i guess that's gonna be the one of the big big reveals about how they market that so what do you think Mm -hmm. the name of that phone will be no idea (laughs) the iphone iPhone no idea (laughs) xse oh my gosh (laughs) sorry 10 se well no i think i think we need to make it xsv which is excessive (laughs) <laughs> yeah that would be something else <laughs> yeah um i don't know it's it's a, it's an awful name it only comes in gold yeah um i think i've heard people call it the um iphone 10 light hmm. that's not a good name in my opinion but it's spelled l-i-t-e yeah well apple has <laughs> never really used that phrase no, that no. kind of 
the the consumer packaged goods market research brain if uh, uh, that I have if I can even be said to have one uh, immediately is like that sounds like an iced tea brand or like you know that's not Apple that's not premium in any way shape or form well there you go problem right? solved I, I yeah I guess I'd maybe go for like iPhone 10 Air Ugh. but. That that seems even worse. It is. I don't it like is that worse because then you're 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 commingling lineups with different right. names. Well, there's already the iPad. There already was the iPad Air for a time. Yeah, but, yeah. I know, and I don't like it. Yep. Nope. I I agree with you, but I I feel like if they were to go for anything in the same span or in, in the same kind of like realm of naming as light, it would have to be Air. Yeah, it's bad, but. But yeah. air brings that it's small and lightweight, not not necessarily cheaper. Right. Um, so, Guillermo Rambo on Twitter, who's at underscore inside, he's yep. done all this spelunking. Um, he says that there might be four new iPhones, the uh, model number T500 or the iPhone 9,7, which would be an iPhone 7 replacement, or the iPhone SE 2. We'll see. And then there's the N84, which is like the iPhone 11, couple one, which would be the... 6.1 inch LCD um, notch face ID dual SIM option, which sounds like more intended for other markets, but maybe maybe that has the I don't know, maybe they sell that everywhere, I'm not sure and then the iPhone 11 3 and 11 5, which would be the 5.8 inch OLED notch face ID and the 6.5 inch OLED with notch and face ID. Yeah, I so this, this lineup makes sense to me do you think the iPhone SE 2, which I don't think we've seen any pictures of, will have, um, I don't know, maybe it won't have a notch, but will it have the home button? Do you think it'll look like the others? Well, if it doesn't have Face ID, I would imagine a home button, but maybe they just do the swipe up action like they do on the 10s. Yeah. That would be a cost-saving measure, right? Mm-hmm. No button. It would be pretty interesting if this were the year, like if this were the event where they just like got rid of the home button across everything. Well, so right? that's that's kind of what I want. Um, yeah. I, well, no. What actually, what I really want is one screen type. Right. Um, so as an app developer, um, and, and for sure I've I've done this. We've yep. had to add special code into our apps to for the handle notch. Yep. the notch. Yep, so absolutely. on phones with a notch, we can detect the screen size and then, okay, it's a notch phone. So now we have to bump down all of our content because there's nothing we can do with that notch space. Right, right. But there's... Apple has the concept of safe insets, so that should be handled for you automatically. React Native, nothing's handled for you unless you handle it. Oh, I suppose. Yeah, so the thing that we, we've done with React Native apps in the past, or that I've done with React Native apps in the past, is you can do some configuration at the Xcode level to improve that, but it th- it's not going to solve everything. Yeah, it's not as sure. flexible as an actual native app. Um, so that's partially our fault, but it, it would still be nice to not have to have two sets of, of layout design. Just give us one set. Right, for sure. Gone are the days of single iPhones every year. Right? I'll, although that is kind of funny now that I think about it. So even if we get a set of phones a set of iPhones with notches, even this um, SE2, which I, which sounds really good, um, then then the iPads won't match because apparently they're not going to have notches anyway. So, right. oh well. I don't know. I think this is fun. Um, I look forward to seeing an SE2. I think that's, that's good. Hopefully it isn't um, so crippled and um, so out of place. Hopefully it's just, just good enough. And furthermore, on the iPhone topic um mkbhd on youtube got a hold of some uh pre-production or just just the physical body somehow he got the shells high quality yeah prototypes shells something like that probably for case makers or something yeah um and he showed those off and they look pretty good in public yeah so so when you actually look at these three phones here so you can you can pause the video to look at these there's there's the three phones and there's the smaller 10 and there's the bigger 10 and then the the, the one we can't name yet, the middle one, has only one camera. And so that's right. also a distinction. So it is it is definitively less premium than the others. Mm. Um, but but it's as far as I can tell, it still has a glass back, and it still has the same kind of rim. 
the other thing that was kind of weird about that is it, it seemed to have like a, a separate, um, I don't know, not a separate skew, but like there was that hardware identifier, that like three or four character hard, hardware identifier. I think Brian, you listed one of them off before, um, that like the decidedly less premium, the iPhone DLP for decidedly oh less gosh. premium, uh, <laughs> has like an N84, um, identifier attached to it whereas the new one like the the true 11s i guess we can call them are d3x both both of which are are listed as d3x and then the 97 uh has a has a separate identifier of its own so like it's kind of intriguing to see kind of that component too like what that what that code might reference like clearly it's something platform level because like the the iphone 11 comma 3 and 11 comma 5 seem to um, definitely share a platform but like that the iphone 11 one has the same model identifier 11 comma one um but a differing like platform identifer n84 versus d3x like so i think um, that x might be a placeholder so like uh uh-huh. d30 and d31 gotcha that's what somebody in the comments below Mentioned. That's not just somebody. That's Will Strafat. Stra, Strafat. Yeah, he, he's old, old hacker, jailbreaker, security yeah. researcher. He's he's pretty legit for sure. Um, oh, and uh, you're right. Further down in the replies, um, the original poster says they're, they're referred to that in code. They're referred to. Oh my gosh, it's referred to as the iPhone Nine. Oh, it's awful. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, no, that no... that name doesn't make sense to me because you you buy it and you're already like, oh, it's old, but is it? I don't know. I, I don't know either. But that's how it, that's what people must have felt with the iPhone eight. Yeah, that's true. Uh, right. They've already done that, I guess. And then the question is that for next year and for for future releases, what do they call e- any of these phones? Right. It's the nine S, but then what do you call the eleven phone? Well, we just have to let Phil Schiller's team. Uh like knock around with it a couple times or, or we just, see what they come up with i don't know i i, I just i give up <laughs> they should, i mean just start using years it's the the 2018 iphone yeah but what happens when you release four different phone types in one year yeah. iphone iphone plus iphone minus <laughs> yeah minus there we go <laughs> yeah uh, it has to be the approach um, yeah, I recommend watching the the full video here because you can see what uh, all of the phone shapes look like, um, and MKBHD does the um, post production editing thing uh, where he actually has a fake iPhone 10 screen fitted onto each one. Yeah, yeah. So that's mm-hmm. kind of fun. Um, so if you thought we were going to talk about iPhones all day, um, you'd be wrong because we're going to talk about MacBook, MacBook and Macs now. Back to the Mac. Back to the Mac, but not too far back, because it's Apple. Um, So, allegedly, Apple will release a new low-cost laptop, in in quotes. Um, Let's talk about that first. Um, It'll be similar to the MacBook Air, with thinner bezels, um, an actual Retina-like display, um, 13 inches. Um, You know, that's that's all I know. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you I say think? about time? Um, I think the tw- the MacBook One or twelve inch MacBook is it's a cool computer. It's a great portable size, but it is almost so restrictive because of that. And I think it's good that we need we have another MacBook coming in. I wonder if the non touch bar MacBook Pro will be discontinued because it's kind of it's using the same uh, thermal powered cpu as the 13 inch macbook air Mm -hmm. and so i think they kind of need to get rid of that or rebrand that as this lower end macbook and maybe remove a feature or just say it's macbook or maybe they say it's a macbook air again either way i think that low end definitely needs some rework yeah for sure so right now the macbook airs that you can buy from apple even start below a thousand dollars i think the little the little macbook air is gone but the regular size macbook air which is the 13 inch one um that one sits around still uh and that's that's totally fine i think it's pretty popular because the the macbook is so underpowered and only has the one port and it starts at 
what, like 1400 or something? 1200, uh, I'm not 12, sure. 1200, I think. Um, so yeah. the, the, the two MacBook Air models that you can buy from Apple are the 13 inch. Um, there's a 128 gig and a 256 gig option. Um, and those are $1,000 and uh, $1,200. And then the MacBook, the MacBook One, the what, what what do people call it these days? MacBook Adorable? Is that what people call it now? <laughs> yeah. Um, that one costs um, a whopping $1,299, $1,300. Right. Yeah. So how, how does this fit in with uh, this whole lineup now, though? So do they make the MacBook $1,000 somehow? And then they have these two new MacBooks, maybe. Maybe they just don't even call them MacBook Airs. It's just new MacBooks mm-hmm. at a 13-inch size. And that starts at 13 and 15. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm not really sure. I think something needs... To, I think I hope they get rid of the Air for sure. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's really weird, though, because I think a lot of people are still buying these cheap significantly cheaper macbook airs i mean it's uh it's a thousand dollars to just buy an apple computer at this point so that's really good for somebody um i think it'd be weird for them to take that away from the marketplace yeah and i I think education for sure is still buying these awful things i mean i can call up ian r buck and verify (laughs) right right well for sure and there's and there's like you know, there's, there's something to be said, too, for, like, um, in large enterprise situations, too. Like, um, there's definitely among, like, quote-unquote enterprise IT. For sure. And, and end quote. Um, there's, like, an, uh, definitely a bifurcation among, like, quote-unquote people who need MacBook Pros yes. and, quote-unquote, people who need MacBook Airs. And... Yeah, you know, that is a great point. Um, my, uh, not my current company, but my client company... Um... They uh, recently just ordered a bunch of MacBook Pros for the developers. Yep. And instead of paying an extra three hundred dollars to get um, MacBooks for their yeah. non-developers for the you know executive team, basically, they yeah. bought them MacBook Airs, and, and so they saved three hundred dollars. But they also were able to reuse every dongle they've ever had. Um, you know, we can plug in HDMI, we can plug right. in um, yeah, that's you true. know USB mice and keyboards. That was a huge deal for them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, repurchasing all that stuff is ri- is ridiculous and happens all the time. Yep. Um, in fact, I think um, uh, something kind of funny happened at work recently where um, I, I realized that the only USB Type-C, like there's one USB Type-C adapter floating around that's like USB Type-C to, what is it, to straight up uh, Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. Um, and like IT holds onto that so it doesn't run away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like I I I asked to borrow it um, to help somebody run a presentation. And, and in order to um, to take it, you had to give them your shoes, right? Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like when you're going to school. I, I I did kind of get a skeptical look. Like I know you don't have a MacBook that has <laughs> that has Type C. Who are you going to lend this to so that I can hassle them to make sure it comes back? <laughs> well, no. It's like in school when you wanted to borrow a calculator or something, you had to give the 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 teacher your shoe or something right well in that case to make it to make it worth their while i would have had to leave them both my shoes uh my backpack uh my probably my laptop too to be honest i don't know what are those adapters running thirteen hundred dollars now fourteen hundred dollars i believe so (laughs) yeah so yeah so the 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 whole thing about having a, a a new macbook air replacement um makes the whole lineup get even more confusing and called into question um, right okay so if that wasn't confusing enough let's talk about the other thing which is a new mac mini yeah this is really intriguing for me yes me too they also say it might be more geared towards professionals professional so... mac mini whoa right and like this this is super killer i think particularly for folks who do ios development or people um, like me who are trying to increasingly offload ios development onto a um real in, machine onto, onto a real machine yeah right so that i can work uh on perhaps a lower powered or maybe even less reliable machine yes uh, like for example a macbook pro that has uh graphics card issues possibly Oops. a faulty graphics card um right then then i could ostensibly you know use an xcode server to run a build 
and uh, and work off of that rather than necessarily having um, having things behave us uh, having to kind of deal with the endemic problems of a of a, of a laptop um, that maybe isn't fully functional. Um, which you know you might be asking yourself as you're hearing Brandon say this. Um, hey, Brandon the solution to that is to get a new laptop not to get a new mac mini no well uh i don't know what it is right because a pro mac mini a desktop class mac mini can um can handle quite a bit and can handle quite a bit um better than i think a laptop that has to make um you know kind of uh power compromises right and uh you know compactness compromises among other things yeah uh, cooling compromises heating and cooling compromises so i think that's something we need to talk about so for example for sure. in in this article um bloomberg writes here that apple's planning to have the first upgrade to the mac mini in about four years now we do know that the mac mini starts at a very low 500 dollars, which is for a computer that has a dual core i5 only four gigabytes of memory and a spinning rust hard drive yep um, so, so hopefully we actually get a computer that's a little bit better than that. Um, so, so I, I guess this is an interesting question. So what, what I'm looking for mm-hmm. to, to Apple actually doing is basically a MacBook Pro, but without a screen. Mm-hmm. So, so give me a 13 inch MacBook Pro, but just don't attach the screen to it. Right. And make fewer, uh, thermal compromises, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the um, tailoring it for pro users could be something, you know, I don't think there are many people who switch from desktop PC to desktop Mac anymore. So it's kind of a, the original purpose of the Mac mini is kind of for nothing now. And so just... Well, the reason nobody switches is because there is nothing to switch to. Well, even beyond that, everyone uses a laptop. Only days. because that's what we have to do to get a computer that's any good from Apple. Right. Well, no, even even Windows computers, it's all laptops. I mean, that's not true. Workstations on the Windows side are working just fine. Yeah, I mean, I just think for, I don't know, maybe maybe not. I think few, more people use laptops and mobile devices today than they do desktops, and I think desktop use is definitely going down mm-hmm. in a like home personal environment. Um, I think. There are certain uses of the Mac Mini, like in a colo space, like Mac Mini Colo or yeah. No Mac Stadium is what they're called now. I um, think that space is highly exaggerated and unlikely to be mainstream. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but it's it's a use case. Um, for sure, a use using case. Using things like a Xcode Build Server or a Final Cut Render Server. Yeah, I think. I think it's like um, one one out of X. I mean, one out of ten. <laughs> yeah, but there are Good uses one. for a a more affordable just small mac just to have on your network to do some things for you Mm because you don't want to have to buy a mac pro or an an imac and just not use the screen so i think it's good that they have some not mac pro style computer that they sell right so this is this is the um i don't need a mac with a screen computer but i don't want to buy a laptop because it costs an extra fifteen hundred dollars that i don't need yeah, for compromises that I don't want. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now let's pretend they actually come out with a computer. What is going to be in it? What is it going to be? I would like to think at least a quad core CPU. Okay, probably, quad core. Probably a mobile mobile chip. I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the new six core, um, what i fives? Because I think they have those now. I I would hope that that would be the case, but I'm. Kind of with Brian, it might be a mobile chip. I'm staring um, right in the face right now of a of my current Mac Mini, um, which I got, um, you know, thoroughly secondhand, possibly thirdhand, <laughs> um, uh, extremely inexpensively. But it's definitely running a mobile chip, and you can feel it. Yeah, a mobile chip from a number of years ago, and that's that's totally fine. But I think just uh, knowing apple and the compromises that they like to make even if they build this as a pro mac mini i'd have to imagine it's going to be a mobile class cpu regardless yeah so i'm looking here at the macbook pros so you can get a um quad core i5 well no you can get a yeah you can get a quad core i5 so i I think that's a good baseline to look for and they can Um, sell that as more energy efficient as well for sure that, that is something they have on the website for the current mac mini 
because that runs super low end mobile chips. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the the mobile chip is kind of crippling, but I don't see them going away from that. Um, what else do you think it'll? Do you think we'll have solid state from the base model up? I would like to think so. For the pro, for the pro, I'd have to imagine it would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, base base RAM configuration. Eight. Eight. Yeah. If it's four, it would be offensive. <laughs> I hope you prepare to be offended. Um, soldered, yeah. soldered, or socketed RAM? Absolutely soldered. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, how many Thunderbolt ports? Two. It depends uh, on the CPU they use. How many they, other they could ports? Push four. <laughs> I I would be I would be intrigued if they did four Thunderbolt ports, no USB Type A. Yeah. Well, and uh, just in general, how many other ports? Even like, do you think there will be other ports? I bet it'll be Thunderbolt, HDMI, Ethernet. What if there is no Ethernet or HDMI? Oh my god. Um, and and what if there's no power supply? You you charge it through Thunderbolt, right? Exactly. <laughs> and they ship God. a power supply for a MacBook Pro with it, uh, right? Well, though that would that would be catastrophic if you unplugged that cable while it was running. Yeah, Those but cables I mean, are who too does, easy to unplug. Who does that? Why are you moving your MacBook? I mean, your Mac Mini. I mean, I I yeah. moved my Mac Mini earlier this week when my MacBook was being awful and I needed to. Uh, I really, really, really needed to get something done, so I uh, moved my MacBook, plugged it in somewhere else. Your MacBook, and, but what about sorry, your Mac Mini? Sorry, sorry, my Mac Mini. Uh, right, so you plugged I it in somewhere else, MacBook. but you you were doing it unintentionally. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so that's okay. Nobody nobody moves a Mac Mini in you know unintentionally when they're doing something important. That that would be bad. Uh, unless you're extremely stressed out, maybe. I but. guess, <laughs> and then you're about to throw it out the window because it's a four year old Mac Mini. Right, right, um, right. Okay, so how much do you think this secret Mac Mini Pro thing will cost? Six ninety nine. <laughs> it's a dream. Yep. Seven ninety nine, uh, maybe something six, like that. Sixteen ninety nine? Is that what I heard? Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking it's got to start at least at the same price as a base MacBook Pro. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you there. Or a thousand dollars. Like they can have some awful model for a thousand dollars, but but right. fifteen hundred for. I think, I think they could push. I think they could go sub thousand, maybe nine ninety nine. Yeah, that's because they that's, they aren't that's, that's shipping a, a screen at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Um, it depends if they can share a lot of the stuff they've built for other computers. So, I, I wonder, can they take literally the motherboard from a MacBook Pro and throw it in here? Call it good. Well, that's what I've been asking for. I mean, imagine the com- so okay. So, what do you think the shape of it will be? Do you think it'll still be this weird little metal square, or do you think it'll be a little bit? different taller wider i bet it'll still be a square it depends if they have an internal power supply will really dictate how large it can be and if they go to a solid state versus a spinning drive that'll make allow them to go a lot smaller as well oh you know um aaron at work uh he he asked a good question um and not live um he asked do you think it will have the chip that, that that was added recently to the macbook pros what is that chip you guys know I don't. The T2? Yes, that one. Um, yeah, why not? The IMAX have it. Or yeah. The IMAX Pro has the, the T1. Um, yeah, why not? It's secure boot. I think that's the way that Apple will be going in the future. You think right. Do you think they'll add a fingerprint sensor? <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. That would be so weird. That would be pretty strange. You know, right in the middle of that Apple. Like, you just touch the Apple and you get fingerprinted. Well, uh, you know, I'm thinking of all the Mac Mini applications, um, you know, like as signage or whatnot, where like you're never going to actually be uh, physically near to the Mini, yeah, really, I know. right? Or physically accessible. That would be pretty funny, but I guess you just use password off then. Yeah, exactly. That I, you know, it's another non-feature that I kind of wouldn't put it past them, but I, also, I, that's, that's that's a stretch even for us, right? <laughs> so. I know a lot of people use their Mac Mini as a like a media PC. Yeah. Um, the current one has an audio in and an audio out port for 3.5 millimeter. No. I'm assuming this Thunderbolt. would still have at least audio out. Nah. Thunderbolt. Do they do they keep optical in oh, that wait. chip as well? Is, do, do they have um do they have a headphone port on the um, MacBook Pros? I don't know. I don't have one. Yes. They do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then they'll then they'll keep it. <laughs> I think, especially for the Mac Mini, they should make sure it's an optical audio out as well. I don't remember if all the MacBooks do that still or not, 
but yeah um, probably not apple would have to invoke another virtue in order to take that away and they're not ready to do that that they've already exhausted courage exactly i bet there'll be a hdmi port on it as well that's no fun i just think for ease of of use hold on while i call up ease of use on this macbook pro (laughs) Hmm. well okay so the macbook pro has a screen built in this this wouldn't i don't think you know, by not having any video out port other than the Thunderbolt, they're requiring every user to buy a dongle. And I just think that's a little too far. No, no, it's not. That's, that's the Apple way. Because who's going to only have one monitor hooked up to their MacBook, Mac, Mac, Mac Mini? Everybody's going to have at least two. <laughs> or none. I think if they don't have a port on there, they will, they will bundle a dongle. No, right. no, you got to buy it. $39 dongle by now okay so that that was cool um i think we're um almost out of time so let's talk about the watch yeah so uh the same day as the iphone x sorry 10s <laughs> was leaked on 95 mac um a screen or a marketing picture of the apple watch series 4 was leaked um, and it shows a watch with some smaller bezels it looks a little thinner pretty sleek and it has this new dense watch face with like eight complications it is so, an extremely complicated watch face truly it looks indeed great i would love to use it i am surprised and maybe this is just the apple lifestyle that somebody's meeting subject line is only three words long yeah true <laughs> i have meetings that have paragraphs of subject lines yeah right right i i got you there and i like the, the thing about the the four is like there's there's much ado about the new um kind of uh body style and um possibly the new innards and whatnot uh and that updated that updated uh watch face yeah lunch with ken who i mean you all know me and my verbosity but yeah my email or my um calendar event titles are all longer than that too yeah um i feel like where this might work is i guess for people who are still rocking the you know series zero apple watch to this day um Brian, do you still do you have a series zero or a series one? I have a series zero and a series three. Oh, right, 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 because we upgraded at the same time. Um, are you thinking about the four at all? We will have to see. Um, I think there's just too much we don't know yet. Yeah. However much I'd love it, I'd probably wait another year. Right. Because every year, is that really necessary? Right. That's kind of where says my, yes. That's kind of where my mind is at too. It feels like this is nice. But it's not nice enough. Like I, I already get most of the utility um, uh, out of my watch by being a GPS tracker, admittedly. Yeah. And then every everything beyond that is a uh, burnout accelerating nightmare of notifications. Um, <laughs> but uh, I feel your pain. Uh, right. So it's like uh, I don't really feel the need to drop another five hundred bucks or whatever on a new uh, on a new burnout machine. Yeah, um, I think right. I'm at a good cadence with upgrading phone one year, watch the next year. Yeah, and then exactly. iPad maybe somewhere in there too. We'll Every see. four to six years, yeah. <laughs> so so this new watch will have a, a slightly bigger display, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So will it get any thinner? It looks like that would be a, a strong yes. But to be honest, the, people make such a big deal about the thickness of the current watches they make it they make a big deal because it looks so big i i don't i don't know but i agree maybe i'm just drinking the kool-aid but well you actually wear it so it's probably not as bad when you actually wear it but i that's when, fair. You, when you look from the outside i think they they have gotten a little thicker and i think slimming it down again would be nice mm. if they have that more screen real estate for larger battery and, and something i think that would be appreciated and and even if it Everyone wearing it is fine with how thick it is. If it looks a little thinner, it might entice more people to buy one. I think so. Fair enough. Um, so do you think they're going to do um, anything special with it? Like, what's the what's the headlining feature other than the slightly larger display? I don't, I don't know if Apple can swing, ooh, it's a slightly larger display for the big improvement. What else is in there? Wasn't there some sort of rumor a while back about Apple being its own MVNO? Uh, its own cell yeah. operator. I think, I think that rumor has been going around, but I find that hard to believe. I, I've 
you know, maybe this is wishful thinking as a watch owner, but I think it would be interesting if they were like, hey, you know, a- Apple will now carry your cell service for for your watch, right? Well, maybe maybe not the phone, but it starts with the watch. Yeah. Hey, if it's cheaper than the $15 a month AT&T charges, sure. Well, here, let, let's think about that. So... So what if you what if Apple said okay you buy the watch for I don't know how much does the watch cost? Uh, let's say four fifty. Okay, so you buy the watch for four fifty, and we'll give you and and, and so then for two hundred dollars a year we will just handle all of the connectivity. Yep. Okay, well that's exactly. more that's more than fifteen dollars a month. Sure. Cool. Apple loves it. Let's do it. Exactly. But it's Apple, so it's way better and worth it. And you can pay it up all at once. It won't be. I don't have to deal with uh, Big Red or uh, or uh, Big Blue, AT and T or whomever. <laughs> Big Blue, yeah. Uh, Medium purple and micro yeah. <laughs> yellow. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's like um, there's there's not really any. Um, you know, that was that was a big consideration for when I was looking at upgrading my watch last year, right? Like I thought I thought really hard about getting. Um, the watch with cell service because it would be really interesting to have um that kind of availability especially when like i'm out on a long bike ride yeah and i do sure. something dumb yep. like uh leave my cell phone at home and get a flat tire and need, need a lift back and can't because i left my phone at home that hasn't happened yet so i think i proved out that i personally don't need that but um you know i i, I thought about that and one of the big reasons i didn't uh in addition to brian's experience um was like I I just didn't really want to deal with having to throw tax some more money onto a Verizon bill. Yeah. Um Cause that's already expensive so, enough. Right, right, right. And I feel like if it were an Apple bill, maybe I would be uh less disinclined or more inclined to think I, about it again. I would agree. So I think I think that's I think that's an interesting thing to think about. I don't feel like this is the right time for totally. an Apple and VNO kind of setup. Yeah, but but the uh, yearly baseline charge kind of thing, I think that's a cool idea for them to explore. Is there any other hardware thing we can think of for a gimmick for this model? Honestly, I feel like just speed. That's a good question. Maybe it's a little faster, thinness, and it being a little larger. If they were able to, if they were able to somehow figure out Face ID, <laughs> that would be entertaining. I don't think that would be strictly speaking necessary. Again, I'm just ideating on ridiculous yeah. things that would be well, way out of left we, field. We, but... we know that iPads can do it without a notch, so maybe the watch can do it without a notch. Right. There was some patent flying around about about having an integrated camera in a watch-like form factor that Apple had a while back. I should see if I can track down that link. Um, but so I, do you, I also um, don't think that's now, but I think that would be interesting. Do you think the bands from previous models will be compatible? It looks... <sighs> that that's image makes it look like it would be um right the the so i think the screen might be larger but the physical footprint of the watch will be the same so the 42 millimeter might not be a 45 or something but it's the same case size as the old 42 millimeter right yeah and even if it's a little thinner your watch band might suddenly be a little more loose or a little tighter based on how you wear it but it would fit the watch still and that would be fine Sounds good. Well, I guess there are a couple more uh, quick news items that we can run through real quick. Um, some smaller stuff that's not necessarily related to the event. Um, starting with um, Apple's uh, App Store affiliate link program, or rather the discontinuation thereof. Um, now, this is really interesting for folks like uh, the Wire Cutter and, and um, like review websites that yep. often get um, some portion of their income from like affiliate linking uh where apple apple um kind of kicks back some amount uh of sales that um are made based on um referrals from these websites um back to the websites that referred them um but it sounds like that's just straight up gone now um i know there are some independent ios developers too who are building apps around the affiliate link yeah ecosystem. Uh, john Voorhees um, of mac stories i think exactly exactly um, so that must be kind of disappointing for them as well. Yeah, it is too bad. Um, so do do we have uh, um, any ideas why they might have done it? My guess is that they're pushing the App Store discovery features and the, the articles and posts they have there. I think their editorial and curation teams are larger than they used to be. Mm-hmm. 
and it's just an expense that they don't have to or don't feel as necessary anymore i do think that the app ecosystem has matured and it's not so much on ooh, let's find an app for this it's more okay what of the big apps should i use right and so i think there's just less of a need for all these reviews now on the other hand i think that's unfortunate because there are a lot of cool indie apps being released all the time right and affiliate links allows sites to more support themselves to review and discuss and share those new apps yep right i'm thinking about other smaller sites too like mac stories and the suite setup and places like that you know maybe not like uh you know the times's technology section or ars technica or or whatnot like those folks will be fine maybe maybe what apple found is that like most of the affiliate revenue was going to those larger sites and maybe they don't care about that yeah. right about like subsidizing um sites that are already more or less as as large as they're uh as large as they are i wouldn't be surprised if apple also found that there was just a lot of noise from affiliate links on uh, right. spammy you know top five games of this week sites yeah right i think exactly yeah I bet they they have a bunch of data as to where the most revenue is coming in from and whatnot. So I think they probably have good reason for it. It's just unfortunate yeah. for the others who are affected by it. Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, next up, it sounds like um, there's some airplane news. Yeah. So last week, I think or the week before, the discontinued Airport Express, discontinued since April, got a software update to have support for Airplay Two nice um so my i have an airport express f- first generation that i yeah, bought like, in high school like in 2010 or something right and it worked fine it stopped working when i moved here and i tried to plug it in it's it never it never it's like the audio plug doesn't work or something i don't know so i i now run a server in my living room that runs shareport sync which implements the airplay one protocol so uh-huh. that works great and then i have a a cord running to some speakers but there's you know the airplay one has a two second delay i think having it being airplay two would just be fun because then i can put out my speakers and my tv at the same time or something right you know why not be on the latest and greatest so i'm considering buying an airport express on ebay or used somewhere amazon does sell them for the hundred dollars still but i don't really want to spend that much on it right so I saw there is one for sale on Facebook Marketplace for twenty dollars in like some super out of the city suburb, <laughs> but I don't really want to drive you know forty minutes one way for a twenty dollar Apple TV or right, right, Airport right. Express. Sorry, yeah, it's a little far. I think uh, at a certain point you're gonna pay more in gas uh, than you <laughs> would to just get that one on on Amazon, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but all the ones on Amazon are like prop or all the ones on ebay are proper like ebay sell they're all bids and like it's mm. it's that's too I was, much work i was working at at lunch at work the other day and it you know went up several dollars just me sitting there and i was in a little bidding war and i'm like eh, it's not worth it yeah so i might see i think i should have bought one immediately when they did the update before people realized that they were worth some a little more again <laughs> but gotcha we'll see what i do uh, well, uh, if you're interested at all in an Apple TV that you could have free of charge, that also implements Apple Apple, uh, sorry, AirPlay two. Um, I don't know if that would be at all interesting, but I've got one of those lying around. Yeah, there's no audio out on there, so it's a little more tricky. On um, an Apple TV, I guess I should check mine. There are HDMI, and then the the Apple TV generation three, two, and one had an optical out. So oh. I did at one point run. When I was in college, I had an, Air, an Apple TV third gen that had a optical out to RCA adapter that I ran in the uh, stereo. And yeah, that you're right. Okay, that wouldn't work. That that only implements AirPlay one. So, gotcha. So I have I have a, one that's too new and doesn't have an audio out. That actually makes sense. I think I tried to do that at JSMN once and was disappointed that I didn't have audio out. Yeah, I I bet someone makes an HDMI to audio adapter. It just but then but then you need another dongle what's that about it's everybody's favorite lifestyle <laughs> yeah yeah well last but not least i think um you know brian and i are now both running the ios 12 betas me too yeah hey everyone everyone's on the beta nice i don't have an iphone but i do have an ipad nice, nice. 
So I I got it on Thursday night. It was like really late, but I'm like, well, I'm just gonna, why not? I'm just gonna update it now, because um, that was when the alert that said you're running an outdated version of iOS, please update in the iOS 12 beta pop up <laughs> went out for a day. Yeah, bad date time logic apparently. But I was running the iOS 11 public beta still, and so it was happening on there too. Only it said iOS 11 beta. And so I'm like, well, maybe the iOS 12 one fixes it. I think I was behind on Twitter, so I didn't see that it was still doing it for everyone. So I updated it. Still happened, of course. And then at work the next day, I updated it right before lunch because the new beta was then released that fixed it. Nice. Yeah, uh, a couple days ago, that pop-up was really incessant for me. And I was already running the 12 betas because um, I, I like to watch the world burn. And I like my personal devices to run beta like early beta software because living on the edge it's fine if it's stable life is better when your computers don't work that's my motto <laughs> um oh yeah i ran joe broken for years and it was the same way just unreliable continuously right well and it's it, it, it's kind of nice except for when it's not right um so there's, there's there's something to be said for i think um uh, one of my coworkers made the joke that it really makes you feel better about software you write when you see other people's software fail, right? <laughs> that is yeah. a horrible way to live, but I agree. Uh, even Apple causes out of memory errors sometimes, right? I guess uh, so. <laughs> womp womp. Um, but no, it should be interesting, and I think it sounds like we're going to try and have a conversation about iOS 12 um, at some point and record it and release it as a podcast episode. Um, is that is that still uh, still the plan, Brian? Yeah, look out for that on Second Opinion in the next few weeks. It's a good Should plan. Should be pretty awesome. Cool, cool. Well, I think that just about does it for this Apple centric episode of Podkit, which is sure uh, awesome because that's kind of uh, our deal here. Here at Podkit, yeah. So you'll not? you'll be hearing us most likely next time, uh, shortly in the future, where we are talking about the Apple Keynote. When is the Apple Keynote? September 12th at September 10 a.m. Pacific. That is wonderful. And so you'll be hearing us on the Nexus special that we do for that event. Um, and I'm sure we'll be talking all about the things that didn't get released that we desperately wanted, like a Mac Mini. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that, I guess. Should yeah. be pretty Lots fun. Lots coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So that'll be pretty fun. Um, so, uh, Brian, where can we find you on the Internet? Well, you can find me just about anywhere, but especially on Twitter at Brian Mitch L or on my web- website, brianm.me, where I have a new living documents page. Um, I have a new a new one there that's all the gear that I use, so like my computers nice. and phones. And that's whatnot. cool. I should so do that. Check it out there. So, Brandon, where can we find you? Uh, you actually can't find me on the internet uh, for the next what? week or so. Uh, I'm basically uh, probably not going to be on Twitter or uh, most, most of the places because... Uh, I have a really busy uh, week of uh, of work and meetup y things this week um, in preparation for the first ever uh, official recurring JavaScript MN that will take place at my workplace. Nice. Um, nice. In addition to like a bunch of client deadlines and other fun stuff. Uh, so I'm going to be pretty heads down this week. You know, uh, normally but... when people say, yeah, you can't find me anywhere on the internet, it just usually means they're going on vacation for a week. Uh, so that's kind of the entertaining part because uh, I'm I'm going to be also uh, traveling to Portland for XOXO Fest. Oh, nice! Um, uh, Thursday through Tuesday. So, uh, is that going to you know, be your first time there? Yeah. So um, the that past couple, cool. the past couple of years that they've had it, I think they've had it for four years and then skipped last year. Yeah, um, something like that. So, like for all four years that it was occurring, I was in college, um, and the University of Minnesota has this fun policy where if you don't show up for class. Um, for every day of class within the first week, they can kick you out of the class, um, which, uh, of course, uh, that's a problem. Being, yeah, me being me, I don't really want to get kicked out of classes because at that point, I had a really strong priority of graduating. Turns uh, out, <laughs> turns turns out, that's a uh, kind of a big deal uh, when you're in college. Uh, but now that I have graduated, I don't need to show up for classes, and in fact, if I did, it might be considered a little bit strange. Um, so you now skip uh, work. I know, so I'm I'm taking advantage of the PTO I never use, and uh, <laughs> PTO you and, can never use. Right, 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 right. It's uh, it's one of my coworkers is making fun of me for for how bad I am at PTO. I actually took yeah. Wednesday off too, but I'm not going to now because again deadlines. Yep. Um, so uh, that that's where I'll be Thursday uh, through through the end of next week. So if you follow me on Twitter or on Mastodon, 
um, where my username is Brandon MN, Brandon underscore MN rather, or Brandon. Um, that's uh, where I'll be posting about some stuff. So should be should be fun. But generally speaking, I'm going to try to keep my internet stuff to a minimum so that I can uh, get done can, what I need to get done. You can do that thing we call focusing. <laughs> maybe we'll see. Psh, maybe who needs that? I, never guaranteed focus. Just never. Uh, maybe fewer frequent or less frequent posts on instagram of what food i'm making delicious well you can find me just about everywhere but especially on the twitter at randomr and of course on mastodon uh i have no idea which one but my username wherever it is is randomr uh and of course on my website ran you can find the the two others if you go to my mastodon which is uh, mastodon.cloud slash brian mitch l and then you can look at my follow list and i followed those two or they follow nice. me. Whatever one's shorter will probably be easier. Yep. And of course, you can find uh, show notes for this episode uh, at thenexus.tv slash PK41. And of course, on uh, our subreddit, uh, r slash TV, And you can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash TV, where you can support things like us talking about things like that we just talked about. <laughs> that was a thrilling read. Yeah. Very, very thrilling. well done, Ryan. That was awesome. Fast thrilling Fast. gotta get done we patreon it very focused one might say whoa whoa what <laughs> well this is fun on that note we will uh check in at the next podcast where we will return with new twitter followies in that episode yep you have a good one all right have a good one have a good one The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Tech news is dominated by big announcements with big bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes they make us laugh. Yes, I'd like to order four thousand lattes to go, please. Sometimes we laugh at them. Courage. Sometimes we're filled with awe. There it is. Oh! Check that out. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. They never want us to forget. Remember that the show's never over, because I got one more thing. Now, it's often difficult to make the journey to see these events live. This is a freaking dirt road! Oh my god! <laughs> but we here at the Nexus TV have got you covered. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. So come join us as we explore the brave new worlds that await us. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today.